Hello, a short tutorial today from me all about how to create a countdown timer in PowerPoint. I was asked this question in a community that I belong to and it's so cool I thought I'd record a short video showing you how to do it. So before I show you what's involved, let me take you into show you the two types of countdown timer I'm going to demonstrate. Here's the first one and the back end of the slide you'll agree does look a little bit of a mess but if I choose to play it you'll see what happens. We start off with five seconds on the screen and when I press click with my mouse it's going to count down five seconds and each one of those will disappear. So here we go, five, four, three, two, one and it's all done. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? Now if I move on to the next slide, the next slide has a 15 or 20 second timer uh, on it, and this is a progress bar. And that's a shape animated to take however long I want it to go, and then it will stop. So I'm gonna show you how to create both of those in the next couple of segments. We'll start by adding the shapes to the slide. So I'll go to the insert ribbon, I'll go to shapes and choose the shape I want. I'm going to choose uh, ovals and in order to get a perfect circle I'll hold down the shift key at the time where I click and drag. You'll see it's picking up my accent colours from my brand and that's a whole other video tutorial or actually online course. I want to duplicate that shape four times because I want to have five and the keyboard shortcut is control and the letter D. So control and D four times. So I've now got five circles. They're all identical. And now I can drag them out and place them where I want them. Now, of course, you could have them much smaller. You could have them at the top, at the bottom, really up to you. Once I've got them selected, I'm going to shift click to select all of them come up to align and I'm going to align them to the middles so that they're all in exactly a straight line and I'm also going to align them horizontally. I'm going to distribute and you'll notice that align to selected shapes is selected. That means that the, the distribution happens from the left edge of the leftmost shape to the right edge of the rightmost shape. So when I distribute them horizontally, it just spaces them out beautifully. Then I want to add my numbers. So I'm going to add five, four, three, oops, no, can't type, three, two, and one to my countdown timer. Now I need to add an animation so that each one of them will disappear. And I also need to add a delay so that they stay on screen for the length I want. So I'll start with number five. Now I'm going to add a disappear animation to this shape because I want it to exit and disappear. So I've selected it, I'll click the drop down and choose disappear from the exit options. I'll then go to each shape in turn and do the same. And I like to do it shape by shape because that means that PowerPoint knows which order the animation should take place in because each animation is giving its own number, starting at number one. So number two actually is number four. The next thing I want to do is change the delay and the way it performs on screen. So again, starting with number five, I can do it up here on the ribbon or I can open the animation pane and do it from here. So I'll just do it up here on the ribbon. The first shape is going to be on click, so I'll launch the countdown by clicking with my mouse or pressing a key on the keyboard. And then I want the duration to be 0.01. That's just how it needs to be. And the delay is going to be one second. So they go up in quarter of a second increments, so I'll make that a whole second. The next thing I want to do is start this to happen after the previous animation has finished. Again, I want the duration to be 0.01 and I want the delay to be a second. So this is how I build up my one second delay for each of those shapes. After previous, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0
delay of one second and so on. So this will just take me a moment. So there we have it. I now have my animation on all of them. And the next thing I want to do is add one more shape, which is going to be what happens when it's all done. And I chose the star. So I'm going to draw in the big star uh, and I can uh, recolor it and say all done. And then I'm going to place the star on the top. Now I'm going to add an animation to this one. And this animation is to appear because I want this one to appear when the other one stops. And this time I'm just going to make sure that the star is the last one in the sequence, which it is. And again, I'm going to make the duration at 0.01 and I just want it to appear immediately after. Um, let's make the duration a quarter of a second. Now we can play that, preview that animation and watch what happens. So now the numbers count down and we're all done and that's it. So that's how easy it is and really the sky is the limit as far as your thoughts and your imagination is concerned. So let's have a look at how I create the progress bar. The progress bar is even easier. We start off by going to the insert ribbon, going for shapes again, and this time I'm gonna choose an oblong rectangle and I'm going to draw out my progress bar to be as thin or as big as I want. I can change its color, whatever I want to do from there. I'm then gonna go back to the animations and the animation I want for this one is I want it to fly in. You'll see it defaults to coming in from the bottom. We're gonna to come to effect options and make it fly in from the left. The next thing we want it to do are to set the number of seconds. So I'm just gonna make this a 10 second uh, one, but so that it's not too long right now, and that's really it. And if I was to preview that, then you'll see it starts to kind of come in slowly and it will last for a full 10 seconds, which is quite a long time. So, if you're timing your participants in a training session uh, or any other online meeting that you're in and you want to show a timer, you've got two options now for creating a progress timer or the five second countdown timer. So if I now turn it to, um, I go to the slideshow ribbon and I just choose to play from the current slide, you'll see when I set the click, my countdown timer will start, my five seconds will disappear off the screen and I'm all done. And when I click to go to the next slide and I click to start my progress bar, my 10 second progress bar will come along the screen. It's that simple. Let me know how you get on with this and what situations you use to apply it to. And I'll see you in another video sometime soon.